In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a social media post in PowerPoint. And this is exactly what we'll be achieving by the end of this tutorial. So if you like what you have seen and want to create something like this, keep watching. So to get started with our social media post in PowerPoint, the first thing we do is open PowerPoint. Having opened PowerPoint, the first thing I do is change the layout to get rid of these text boxes. So I go over to layout. Then I choose blank. The next thing I do is change the dimension of my canvas. To do that, I go over to design. Then I click on slice size. I choose custom slice size. In here, I'm going to give it a dimension of 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels. However, the unit of measurement in PowerPoint right now is in inches. And 1080 pixels is equivalent to 11.25 inches. So the width I will set it to 11.25 and then the height is also going to be 11.25 then I click on OK and now my canvas is in square and that is the ideal dimension for a social media post the next thing I'm going to do is insert a shape so I go over to insert then I choose shapes and I'm going to go ahead and choose oval under basic shapes it's going to be a perfect circle so to draw it i make sure i hold down the shift key on the keyboard then i begin to draw my circle something like this i can reposition it i make sure it is centered so when you see this pink broken lines it means it's in the middle of my canvas but i want it to be at the right side of the canvas like this so that part of the circle will be cut off as you can see right here it should be noted that whatever is outside the canvas will not be part of the design when we finally export it as an image. I'm going to increase the size. Make sure you always hold down the shift key on the keyboard to get a perfect circle. What I'm going to do is I don't need the outline. So I go over to shape outline. Then I choose no outline. The next thing I'm going to do is duplicate this circle. So it's still selected. Then I go over to Home, click on Copy, then click on Paste to have a copy of it. Meanwhile, the second one, I'm going to change the shape field. So I go over to Shape Format. The shape field, I can just choose any color for now. Maybe something like this. I make sure I place it on the first one perfectly. And I'm going to go ahead and reduce the dimension holding down Shift key on the keyboard. So that I will get a perfect circle like this. And I make sure it is placed very well in the middle. As you can see, my broken lines. Perfect. Similarly, I duplicate this one. So I go over to Home, Copy, Paste. Then I'll give it a different shape field. I go over to Shape Format, Shape Field. I can choose any color just to have a variation. I'll also go ahead and reduce the dimension, holding down Shift key on the keyboard. And make sure I place it in the middle. Awesome. Next, I select the shape on top and I'm going to go ahead and fill it with an image. To do that, I go over to Shape Format, then I click on Shape Fill Picture. I'm going to insert from a file and this is the image I'm going to use. I select it, then I click on Insert. The image is not in good shape, it is kind of squeezed. So, what I can do is go over to Picture Format. I drop down the arrow and the crop, then I click on fill, and you see that it's now in the right dimension. So I can move it to whichever part I want, something like this. So this is the part I want to show match. I exit. Now I'm going to change the shape fill of the two circles behind, and I'm going to pick my colors from the image right here. It doesn't really matter. You can choose whatever colors you want. I'm only doing this because I want to have unique colors for my design. So first of all, I select the shape behind, that is the blue one. I go over to Shape Format, and the Shape Fill, I choose Eyedropper. And you see that my mouse pointer has changed to a color picker. And I'm going to go ahead and pick a color from here. Next, I select the inner circle, that is the second one. And I go over to Shape Fill, Eyedropper, and I'm going to go ahead and select a color from here. Perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is add a rectangular shape. So I go over to insert shapes, then I choose rectangle. 
this is where I draw it from. I just want part of it to hide behind the circle. Maybe this much. I want it to be in the middle and also touch the left edge. Perfect. The shape is still selected. I go ahead and click on send backward and it's now behind the image. Meanwhile, it's on top of the second circle. I don't need the outline, so I go over to shape outline. I say no outline. Next, I go over to shape fill and I'm going to go ahead and make it black. What I can also do is select the circle with the image. Then I go over to shape outline and I'm going to go ahead and apply this color. That is the color of the second circle so that the line here will stand out on the black background. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add in some text. So I go over to insert. Then I choose text box. I draw it right here. The color of my text is going to be black if I begin to type. So I won't be able to see it clearly. So what I do is first of all, I change the font color. I drop down the arrow and I'll choose white. I'll enter real. I'll select the text box and I'll increase the size to maybe 80. I move the text box on top like this. I can also change the font to Arial and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. So I click on copy, then paste. I move it down to still be in the same line. I edit Real to Estate. I'll open the text box so that it will fit very well. I'll change the font color. So I'll go over to font color and I'm going to go ahead and use this. I duplicate this one as well. So I click on copy, paste, and I move the text box to still be in the same line. I change it to agents. I open it up. Maybe estates can also be white. Why not? I think this looks cool. Next, I'll insert another text box like this. I'll change the color to white. It's going to be in the form of quotes. So I enter quotation mark. You choose we deliver. I select it. Then I'm going to go ahead and change the font. I'll choose informal Roman. I increase the size. Maybe I can make it one line, something like this. I think this looks cool. I take it up a bit. Next, I'm going to go ahead and insert a shape. And I'll choose rounded corners. I draw it right here. Maybe this much. I'll increase the roundness by holding this yellow node and drag it inside a bit. Something like this. So that it will look like a peel. I'll reduce the height a bit like this and I'm going to go ahead and add a text box. So I go over to insert text box. I draw it right here. I will say visit us in capital letters. I select the text box. Then I make sure the text is centered. I change the font to Arial. I'll increase the size to 24. And I'll go ahead and make it bold. The text box is still selected. I hold down shift key on the keyboard. Then I go ahead and select the shape behind. Next, I go over to shape format. And the alignment, I choose center. I go back to alignment again. And I choose middle. So that the text box will fit very well in the middle of the shape. I exit from here. And I select the shape. I'll change the shape fill to this color. Awesome. Next, I add a web address. So I select this. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate it. I select it. Go to home, copy, paste. And I drag it down. So we will not see the text because it's black. First of all, I select it. And I change the color to white. And I'll go ahead and enter my web address. I open the text box so that it will fit in one line. And I'll make sure it's in the middle of the shape. Next, I'm going to add a contact information. And I'm going to go ahead and insert an icon. So I go over to insert 
then I click on icons. For you to be able to use this, you will need an internet connection. Right here, I search for phone. This looks cool. I select this, then I click on insert. I have right here. I move it down here. Next, I go over to insert text box. I draw my text box right here. Then I enter info. I select the text box. Now I'm going to go ahead and make the text bold. I change the font to Arial. I will go ahead and duplicate it. So I click on copy, paste. Then I move it down and make sure it's in line. I enter my phone number. Meanwhile, I'm going to remove the bold. I'll increase the size of my icon here. I select these two text boxes. I can reposition them so that it will be in the middle of the icon. And I think this looks cool. The last thing I'm going to do is make room for a logo on top right here. So I can just insert a shape to represent a logo. I go over to insert shapes. I'll pick hexagon. Then I draw it right here like this. I don't need the outline. The shape feel is going to be black and I'll duplicate it. I can just press Ctrl plus D key on the keyboard to have it duplicate. I make sure they are placed very well on top of each other. Now I select the top one. Now change the shape feel to this color. I move it towards the right side a bit. Then I go ahead and send it to back. So this will represent my logo. Maybe I can add a text. So I go over to insert text box. I draw my text box right here. And I'll say company name. I select the text box. I change the font to Arial. Then I make it bold. I open it up so that it will be in one line. I can duplicate it, copy, paste. Then I drag it down. I'll call this one tagline. I'll remove the boldness. Now I select the two text boxes. I'll move it down a bit. And this looks cool. And now I am done with the design of my social media post template. Take note, you don't need to worry about this side right here since it's not going to be part of the image when we export it, as you can see right here. So let me show you how we can export it as an image. To do that, we go over to File, then click on Save As. You can choose a Save As location. I'll choose Browse. I'll call it Social Media Template or Social Media Post. Under Save As Type, I drop down the arrow. From here, I can choose either JPEG or PNG. And I'm going to go by PNG since it will give me a high resolution. Then I go ahead and click on Save. Which slide do you want to export? I just have one slide, so I'll click on just this one. Take note, it's gone to the Documents folder. Let me go ahead and open it up. I have it right here. I open it up. And it's right here. Isn't this cool? If this is posted on social media, who wouldn't want to wait and take a look at it? So that's it on how to design a social media post in PowerPoint. I hope you found value in today's video. If you did, kindly give it a thumbs up and don't also forget to subscribe if you have not yet subscribed so that you miss out on our future videos. In the meantime, stick around to watch related tutorials on your screen right now. Keep watching and I'll see you in the next one.